Napoleon is known for being a French military leader and emperor who conquered much of Europe in the 19th century. He attended military school at a very young age and eventually graduated from the French Military Academy in 1785. He then became a second lieutenant in an artillery regiment in the French Army, which was a huge privilege to have in the 1700s. Since most of Napoleon's early years consisted of being in the military, he soon got introduced to a government in his hometown, Corsica. Even though he was intrigued in that idea, Napoleon stayed in the military. In 1792, he got the best of both worlds when France's government got involved in military conflict with the many of the European nations. He was not happy about this, so he demanded a larger army to defeat the armies of Austria on a series of battles in Italy. Since that first demand, he continued to make more orders leading him to create an army of his own. Due to his authority, he crowned himself as king in 1804. Also in 1804, a plebiscite, which was a vote determined by the people of the entire country's opinion, made Napoleon emperor. By 1807, a painting named The Coronation of Napoleon was made, displaying the crowning of Napoleon becoming king and honoring his ruling. Napoleon displayed many events that led to his gaining of authority. In 1804, he created a French civil list of rules that stated the privileges that were forbidden based on birth, allowed freedom of religion, and specified that governmental jobs should go to the most qualified. This was simply called the Napoleonic Code. This led to more and more people converting to his side because he gave out freedom. Also, a federal law was shortly established called Civil Service Reforms. It enforced everything that was mentioned in the Napoleonic Code. In addition to Napoleon's gaining of authority, there was a Louisiana sale. Napoleon sold the land of Louisiana in order to obtain a significant amount of money. With that money he managed to grasp, he gave his people needed provisions and, more importantly, purchased well-crafted weapons and sent his men to a great physical boot camp. He needed this to happen so that his army would become one of the strongest out there and having the ability to conquer any battle or war. As Napoleon kept gaining more amounts of authority, he reached his designated point as ruler. Unfortunately, from here on out, things went downhill. From 1803 to 1815, a series of major conflicts occurred that enforced the French Empire to fight against the European coalitions. These wars were military victories of Napoleon. These specific wars were considered to as continuation of the French Revolution. Initially, the power of French did rise as the armies of Napoleon conquered much of Europe. However, they started to rapidly collapse after the invasion of Russia in 1812, which is further amplified towards the beginning of his true downfall. Napoleon was defeated in 1814, then once more in 1815 at Waterloo after his brief return to power. Starting to really show Napoleon's downfall, the war with Spain and Portugal occurred, which is also known as the Peninsular War. This was a military conflict for control over the Iberian Peninsula during the Napoleonic Wars. When French and Spanish armies were allies, they occupied Portugal in 1807 and escalated in 1808 when France turned on Spain. The war lasted until 1814. It was regarded as one of the first wars of national liberation. As British and Portuguese forces eventually secured Portugal, they used that land to launch campaigns against the French armies, while both Spanish and Portuguese guerrillas weakened the occupying forces. Napoleon's last stand occurred in 1815. He marched into Paris with his supporters, having escaped from exile in Elba a month earlier. Due to all this happening, it resulted in Napoleon's and France's domination of Europe stage that was initialized by the French Revolution. Shortly after his last stand was the Battle of Waterloo on June 18, 1815. Napoleon was defeated by two of the armies from the 7th Coalition, an Anglo-allied army under the command of Duke of Wellington, and Persian army under the command of echt von Blücher. Upon Napoleon's return to power in March 1815, many states that had opposed him formed the 7th Coalition and began to mobilize armies. Napoleon chose to attack them in the hope of destroying them before they could join in a coordination invasion of France with other members of the coalition, but had failed miserably. Then in his last moments of life was the exile to St. Helen. This time, after his defeat at Waterloo, the European powers were not going to take any chances on Napoleon's possible return. They exiled him to the island of St. Helena, which was a wind-swept rock location in the South Atlantic Ocean. Napoleon passed away six years later, most likely determined from stomach cancer. In 1840, his body was returned to Paris, where it was interred in the Hotel des Invalides. 
Napoleon came conceited and full of himself. He thought he was the best emperor in the world and that could win every battle and take over any land he wanted. But when one's mindset is like that, payback comes and reality sets in. For Napoleon, reality demonstrated the truth that people do not always win and must face losing and failing as well. Napoleon was able to gain and ultimately lose absolute authority over France through his wins and loses. That's how he was able to do so throughout the stage of, stages of his life. <laughs>